Today we're going to talk about sputum samples. What a lovely topic. But they're really not used enough, in my opinion. And I have a lot of patients that have had two or three courses of antibiotics before I've been asked to be get involved with them. And they've never had a sputum sample. And the patient's frustrated because their infection is going on and on and they feel rubbish and they want to know what to do about it. And actually a simple thing would be each time they get the signs of an infection, so sputum changes, colour, consistency or amount, or the patient just feels like they can't clear what they would normally clear when they're well, so it's actually retained because it's infected, then a sample needs to be sent off for M, C and S. Um, and that's the basic test for sputum, just to try and see what antibiotics are going to hit whatever is growing in the airways. It takes about three or four days for the test to, results to come back because of the way they need to do it in the lab. So actually, if a patient is symptomatic and they're contacting their GP or they need to take their rescue pack, then they should be advised to have a sputum sample. And I'm talking about patients with chronic diseases like COPD, chronic asthma. Um, that's my specialty. So those patients that are having two or three infections a year, lots of antibiotics, not really resolving with first line antibiotics, lots of inhalers and quite breathless. So it's really important they have that sputum sample done and it's better to have it done right at the beginning. Don't delay the antibiotics because of it. Start the course after you've done the sample or if you started the course and then given the sample in, just make sure it's on the form that you've started amoxicillin or doxycycline or whatever it is so that they know in the lab. And then if these antibiotics aren't working, which you should know by day four or five, then you'll have the results. You'll know what you're growing and your GP or your physiotherapist or your um, specialist nurse will know from the results of that microbiology what to switch you on to rather than it just being guesswork and going on and on and on. And then often they can get the dose right as well, depending on what was grown. So in terms of sputum samples, when you're actually doing one, you want a really nice dirty sample. There's no point in putting a bit of spit in there. It needs to be on from the chest. So you need to be doing your chest clearance, which there are other videos teaching you how to clear your chest, such as the active cycle of breathing technique. So you want the dirtiest sample you can get. So often it's that first morning sample that's been sat there for a while in your lungs and really has the most bacteria on it or a sample from lower down in the lungs. So not just that um, first sort of fresh bit that you can cough up. You need to get it to the practice, your GP practice um, that day. It shouldn't be lying around. Um, sometimes if it's after midday at the GP practice, then the porters won't come till the next day. So they, the GP practice will need to refrigerate it to avoid any extra things growing from the air around it because it's not a sterile procedure. So ideally, a nice dirty morning sample, drop it straight to the GPs for an MC and S. Generally, the GP practices don't like it if you are delivering a sample without a healthcare professional advising it. But if you do have a condition such as COPD, um, I think it's completely justified. So you might want to have that discussion with your clinician, your practice nurse, your specialist nurse or physio and plan for that because that should be in your action plan. And that's sputum samples, briefly.